Hi everyone, this is Ray with the education team from Swirly Do's Kit Club, and today I'm going to be sharing with you a background I'm going to make using the Mediums add-on from the Artful Blues Kit. So this was for February 2015, and what we got in the Mediums add-on was three things from our anthology, and we've got this, which is a sorbet, it's a dimensional paint, and it's in Pixie. We have an awesome drip stencil and some stucco texture paste. So I'm going to be showing you some properties of both of these just on pieces of scrap paper just so that you can get an idea of how to use them and maybe how not to use them. I think you may have seen, if you've seen other videos from us, you've seen us use this sorbet dimensional paint and the one thing I will tell you with both of these is if you're going to use them make sure it says to shake well and I shake it but I like to stir it and I think it will work out much better for you if you actually stir or shake it. A lot of times you look at some of these things and you say oh well that looks thick enough to me but I guarantee if you stir it it's going to get thicker and it's going to be something that you're more willing to use. And I haven't used this stucco before, well I've just been playing around with it, but I haven't used it on other projects before. And when I first opened this, it did have a little bit of a watery top to it. And so I stirred that. You can get these little sticks from Michaels and like a pack of a hundred. And they're so much easier than to use like the bottom of your paintbrush or something. Okay, so I just want to show you some of the properties. For the sorbet, the one thing you need to know is that even though it's a little bit runny sometimes, it's actually pretty thick because it's a dimensional paint and it's translucent. And we've used these before, so I'm not going to go over that in too much detail. But here's an example. It's shiny and it's translucent and it has glitter in it, so it's really pretty. Now for the stucco, I wanted to see what it could do. So what I did is on a scrap piece of paper, I decided to make it really thick and really thin in some spots just to see what it could hold and what it couldn't hold. Now the thing I will tell you is that it needs some dry time. This is still puffy and I used a heat gun on it and it's probably been sitting for about 30 minutes. And so it can still mold a little tiny bit. So you're definitely going to need a heat gun or to be very patient and wait overnight. So what I did first is I used some of the mist that our anthology has. What do I do? With okay. Just this right here, just to kind of see how it would react. And I liked how when it was kind of thin and there was a definite definition with the stucco, like you can kind of see, you can see the brown cardstock sticking through there. When I misted and I did it ever so lightly, it stayed the way that it was. But when I doused it a little bit more like I did over here, the definition of the stucco kind of dissolved. It didn't hold how it was supposed to or how I thought it might. And so if I did it very lightly, like right here, it's stuck. Now, right here, I used Prima. I used the Color Bloom, this kind that you get right here. And I think that is just a little bit heavier than other mists. I'm not sure, maybe it just has more mica or maybe I'm just crazy, but it seems like it's kind of heavier to me. And so when I did a big spray, just kind of in close proximity, the stucco didn't hold up very well, even though it's been completely dried. So I wouldn't suggest dousing it. I would maybe do a light mist if you were going to use Prima over it. However, the Tattered Angels that I used right here, seemed to go very well with it. So it looks really nice and it didn't dissolve any and the definition is still there. So that's just my take on what you can do with it. I would probably practice on a sheet of paper like this just so that you can kind of get a feel of the properties of the stucco before you actually put it on a project. And now for the background that I'm gonna create with this. What I wanna do, this is gonna be my major sheet right here. And I'm gonna use this picture of me and my darling son when he was younger and I want it to go right here. So whenever you're doing a background it's always a good idea to kind of decide where you want your picture to go before in case you want to do something fancy. So what I actually did is I took a pencil 
and I outlined this. Now there's going to be things poking out from there because I like to do lots of layers, but that's going to be my very base. So it's not that I don't want to cover this part up, that doesn't matter, but just if I'm going to add something, for example, these drips, I need to know where I want to place them. So I wouldn't put it like right here, obviously, because then most of that is going to get cut up and I won't be able to see this part right here. So I'm just going to want to figure out what I want to do for that part. So in addition to this stencil, I'm also going, going, I'm also going to be using one from Prima. And I'm going to be using both the sorbet and the stucco. But to start out with, what I want to do is I want to use the drips. I want to tone this whole thing down, so I'm going to be using both of those mediums. But just to get started, I think... I want that to go like so. And now that this is dry, you can see it has definition. I'm just going to show you how it's like that. It looks so cool. And then the ones I would just kind of shift it over with the palette knife and did myself and just kind of scratched. Obviously those look a little bit better. For my next part, I'm going to be using the sorbet. So I'm going to give that a good stir before I get started with it. I'm going to give my project another tone of blue besides this navy right here. And I'm going to be using this Prima stencil to do that just in some random spots here. And that's why this needed to be absolutely dry, this stucco, because if I put the sorbet over, it kind of gloms together and it doesn't look very good like a layer. And for my last part, I'm actually going to be using some gesso. Put a little bit into this little makeshift bowl here. Spray it with water. Stir that up a bit. Add more water if I need to. give the whole thing a wash. And so this is just kind of a fun little background that you can use with the mediums from the Artful Blues kit. And once I get done with this, I'm ready to move on to my layout. So I hope you enjoyed the video and learned a couple of things on how to use the R Anthology mediums, both the stucco and the sorbet. If you don't already subscribe to the kits, I believe there's still a couple of these left in the store. So go to swirlydews.com and then on the left hand side of your screen, look for available kits and the Artful Blues medium add-on should be in there. Thanks for watching.